we've been needing to change our outboard for a while uh, to a more reliable uh, unit so we've gone and bought a Yamaha 9.9 .9, four stroke and we're off to the dealers to get trained in how to use it properly so here's the dealer's experience and thanks to Dean for running us through how to operate this Yamaha 9.9 .9. Yamaha recommend every new owner um, has a dealer demonstration before you actually take the motor, way, uh, motor away so you know how to operate it correctly. Well I think it's a, that's a very good idea. So we're, we're here for the demonstration Dean, so take it away. Yep. So I'll just show you a few things that you're going to need to check before you start the engine and then we'll lift the engine out of the tank and I'll show you some other bits on, on the engine. So before you start it, one thing you do want to do is dip the oil. And, and I've intentionally left the oil a little bit low on this so I can actually show you how to fill it in a minute, lift it out of the tank. But I have checked the oil, so we have got enough oil. Make sure that the fuel's connected. So you've got a little paddle on the side of here, which uh, locks it in position, hatches just a little click there. There yeah. you go, that should click. And that's, that now won't, won't remove from there without pressing the little paddle again. Um, and then the next thing to do is make sure that you've opened the little air valve on the remote tank there. Otherwise it'll airlock and eventually stall the engine. And obviously this needs to be connected in the same way at, at this end. If you haven't used it for a little while, you might want to prime it, but this has already been primed so the bubble's gone hard. So before you start it, you want to make sure that the actual the tilt lock on the engine is locked. So on one of these, the, the, this size of engine, the, the 8 to 20 horsepower Yamahas, they've got a, uh, a manual tilt lock. So if you wanted to tilt the engine, you've got to flip that little paddle down and there is a little pictogram on top of here that shows an arrow pointing down and then shows it tilting. So to tilt it, you push that down and, and you'd, you'd be able to reach over to the handle there, tilt, tilt the engine up and then it would automatically engage on the ratchet to, to hold it up. Right, but so if you're coming into the beach, that's what you'd need to exactly, do. Exactly, yeah. Okay. But it's very important if, if you're obviously going to be uh, going into reverse, click that back up and what that does is it, it, it locks the, the reverse, it won't lift up really important that that is in the up position in order to go into reverse you know so if you're if you're using it really up position beach or tilt down position so but it won't automatically go back you've got to you've got to manually do that's that and then we obviously we check the the oil make sure we've got oil make sure the props in the water and make sure that the the props actually secure with the little split pin done yeah that's another thing you need to check that it's in neutral so you've got you've got forwards reverse and, and neutrals in the middle there the other thing to check is make sure that the clamps are tight that, to the transom and you see this little little um, lanyard hole here so it's not a bad idea to, to put a piece of you know decent rope so if yeah. it does jump off the transom at least you, you've still got it on the end of a rope they yeah. will stand being submerged for a second so if you haul it back out you, you'll find it'll be absolutely perfect underwater for more than a few minutes you, you get back to a dealer and get it looked at yeah. Um, on a day like today, you're probably not going to get any choke, but if you, if you did, you'd pull the choke out. If you're starting it from cold, just position there. Right. If you're starting it from warm, you move it on a little bit further. It's been a while since it's been run, so we'll go back to the cold position there. Um, so, you'll see there's a little, little light there that, that comes on. That's your low oil oh, pressure oh. warning light. Yeah, That'll flicker while we're pulling it over, because it doesn't have any oil pressure initially. And that should go out almost immediately that the, the engine starts. So you, 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 need to, uh, you need to keep an eye on that really. I mean, it, it is quite bright. You'll see it lights up absolutely bright red. So if that happens, you really need to stop the engine straight away, the oil, and see what's, see what's happened. Um, the other couple of little things are the friction control devices. So the steering friction on this is this little paddle on the Starting it, it, it actually helps. If you push that over, you'll see it, it kind of locks the steering up. It's not absolutely locked. You, you can move it, it would be dangerous I suppose for it to be fully locked um, and then you'll see just on here there's a, there's a little and, and it, it won't drop back down if, if that's undone you'll see it's, it, it's it, very very it, loose so the vibration yeah. of the engine will cause the revs to drop if you just tighten that up a little bit it allows it to stay in position so that's that's all the checks done we've, we've made sure that the lock's done there we've made sure that the uh, um, things in, it's not in gear you know we've got the kill cord attached there as well that's what we needed to mention so that's all the safety items. So the uh, the other thing, this is something quite overlooked actually. A lot of people, and you see them when they're starting an engine, they'll, they'll start pulling from here and pull out and, and, and snap the, the two little plastic poles into the housing every time very hard. Uh, the, the best thing to do is to actually engage those gently first like that. One firm pull like that. And uh, it, it's speed rather than power that you're looking for. You've got a decompressor on it. so. 
it's actually not particularly hard to pull over. You do need to pull it over fairly quickly, but it requires much strength. But you know, it's, I'll, I'll let you try it in a minute. So we're, we're now. You can automatically push that. Do you automatically push that back, or do you not have that? Back I back? push that back to idle because otherwise it's really? revving quite quite high at, at the start position. So I drop back that back back down on a colder day. You may need a little bit of chalk, or, or you may need to just just put a few revs on just to let it warm up a little bit. And that's enough warming up. And, and you could now theoretically go straight into gear. If it stalls, it means you haven't warmed it up enough, you know, but it's a warm day today and, and it's been run already, so it wouldn't have a problem there. And we can increase the revs. Obviously, from a running in point of view, you don't want to run it flat out for, for, for the first 10 hours or so. You want to just build up to it. But also, you don't want to leave it at one RPM consistently either. So you want to vary the RPM a little bit from time to time. You can do a minute or two at one RPM, but you don't want to sit there for half an hour at one RPM. And if you take it up to higher revs, after a minute or two, while you're running in, just drop the revs back down again to let it all cool down. Now, you'll notice there's a stream of water coming out the front of the engine. Well, the back of the engine will always be running out of the back of the engine. The power stops, these are the little problems that were. Whenever you're changing gear, you always need to be absolutely down at idle. It's, uh, that's where we are there. And, and then to put it into reverse, it's the same thing. I, I tend to, just to make sure the lock is on, I tend to put my hand there the first time, to make sure it has that, because that would have started to lift up if that had been in position. You can see we can go into reverse quite happily there back and forward so for manoeuvring the dream this system it's lovely you know because it's all just here you know having to reach round and you know um, and then of course you take your friction lock off there to be able to steer and, nice and it'll, it'll hold a course when you uh, yeah, you on a slight amount of friction set it and then put that on and, it, and it's now steering it's the uh, with the modern E10 fuel, the ethanol is actually quite a So then what, you problem. just disconnect the fuel from there? You can do, yeah, yeah. And people leave it connected, you know, but if you're lifting it back off the boat, you can disconnect that. And, and so then shouldn't... you could, what I'm saying is when you've got it running, you take it off the off the yeah. engine to yeah. run it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. you know, and it's, uh, it just uses anything that's in the, in the car, so if you're going to store it long term. And also it just prevents any fuel from leaking out as well. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. It shouldn't leak out in this way, but... Uh, so I'll show you the, uh, the other little bits that uh, we need to see, so we'll just lift this up now. Oh, very nice, you've got a hydraulic lift. Wish we had one of those on the boat. <laughs> well, it's kind of air and, and oil, so it uses the air to pressurise the oil. So just talking about the uh, the split pin in the prop there, so that's, that's the split pin, so you want to just make sure that that's actually not uh, you know, it doesn't come out or, you know, that your, uh, your prop's still rotating freely and you've not got anything stuck behind it. You've got this, this thing called a trim bar here, which, so ideally you want to try and set that. If it's on a tender, you probably want to set that out another hole, uh, just just get the tender planing, you know, just um, you can play about with it and it works really on the, on the... If it was being used as an auxiliary on a boat, you, you might have it kicked further in. So. So we'll just have a quick look under the hood and we'll show you the uh, oil checking procedure. So to remove the hood, by the way, button and then lift it lift up it. over there and then you've got a little prong at the back which is just under there so you see there are some positions people stick them on top and all sorts but it just fits just under so under here you know it's a twin cylinder you've got a couple of spark plugs here so if you did hydraulic it this is where you're going to be wanting to go here so let's just wiggle off like that you can put that spanner on the plugs pull it over a little bit to pump the oil out that's got in there uh, clean the plugs and then put it back in. You might have to do it two or three times if you do hydraulic it. It's a rare thing, but it's nice to know how to do it. You'll hear that little click when that goes back on, so that's that's reseated. Uh, that's your fuel pump, not that you need to really do much with that. Um, you've got the, the uh, little fuel filter under here, and again, it's sort of see-through, so you can sort of tend, you tend to see if you've picked up any any nasty <laughs> fuel, even if it's in it or it goes dark, you know, that gives you an indication that there might be a problem there. You've got the carburetor, a uh, little drain on the bottom there. So if you did get any water in the carb, you can get a spanner in there, a little 10 mil spanner, undo that. It's a bit fiddly, but you, the water that's in the bottom might get you going in an emergency, you know. But it's two long screws, and obviously these linkages need to be removed. So you screw there and another one at the back in behind, which so you need a long extension to get in there. 
that whole thing comes off. You can also, you can you can take the actual inlet uh, manifold off as well as the other way. If I want, that's the other way to do it. Flushing the actual fuel system, you mean? Right? Yeah, I mean, you just take the carb off, the carb cleaner and just flush it all out. Maybe take the idle jet out and uh, and then make them a little flush, you know. Is it what, sorry? The yellow handle there is oil. It is, yeah, I'm going to show you that because it beats technically slightly low because I've just left it uh, just a few millimetres short. So we'll remove that, we'll give that a little wipe back in push it all the way home and then it's so clean but you can see the level see the level of it, yeah so we're about just over half on the dipstick okay. that doesn't mean it's half full it actually just means that it's, That's it's just the engine yeah, yeah it's just shy of the top there so we're just going to show you how to get that to the right level now if you if you go too far you know it's they're putting these back on by the way if you rotate them backwards until you hear the click <laughs> there you go because you cross thread it that might have worked its way down by now there you go we're actually <laughs> tiny bit high I will, i'll drain a little bit out well yeah now we have a little strap system that goes on the top of the existing one yeah. which we were going to put on the new one but it's a it's not a great dis a neck to fit <laughs> They are. <laughs> and do They're you, very handy, aren't they, for lifting and, uh, and the like. Yeah, do, we've do, got you, a frame to lift it. do you have anything better? Um, we don't, you know, the, the, uh, the one that you're talking about, I think it's, a, it's probably the Italian. Uh, it is, yeah, yeah, and it's got rubbish just, instructions yeah, and it's. They are, they're a bit tricky to fit, but, they're, uh, but they do work quite well once they're on. They do, definitely. You know, yeah. I've, uh, I've used them. So grease, greasing up and... There's a few bits and pieces, you've got your linkages here, you see there's some on there, there's some grease, your throttle cable there, they need greasing. You've got your, uh, your, your neutral lockout cable there, that needs a little bit of grease on it. Uh, you've got your, um, your transom clamps, tricky to grease because they don't have a grease nipple. So the grease goes in through that little hole there. And most Yamaha dealers have a little cone fitting that they can squirt grease in. Do You could turn that all the way out and, and give it a rub with, with a rag to get the, the rubbish out the... Uh, and then re-grease it and wind it in and out. Uh, the one where you can't really do that is this one here and this one here. So these again, it's the same system. There's not really a grease nipple, but you can see the grease has come out there where it's been greased, and that's to keep this. Um, so if you, if you don't grease that, you'll find that eventually that, that no. the sea air will get in there and that will seize up. So uh, you need a little bit of grease on the uh, the other end of the, uh, um, and then last but not least, a little grease nipple on the side here. That, that's for the actual steering tube. It all comes out at the top there. Really, you know, there's a, there's a, a three month or 20 hours um, maintenance, which is a, a basically a check. And, and the main bit is that we change the gear uh, gear oil uh, and we just check everything's okay. Check so you're spark. checking the gear oil to make sure there's no water in the, in the gearbox? Yeah, box. we generally will replace the spark plug, make sure everything looks okay, everything, nothing's come loose on it, you know, and you're not having any problems. And then from then on, it's an annual service. It's uh, I think it's a hundred hours or, or annual, but whichever comes soonest and it's the time. You know, you uh, you tend to uh, you tend to get to the time before you get to the hours, unless it's commercial. You so know. is that um, somebody like you to do? The yeah, yeah. I mean, you can do it yourself. You know, as long as you keep all the receipts and uh, and, and log it with a Yamaha dealer. But you will lose two years of your warranty there because it's, it's a yeah. three-year statutory warranty, but you get two years bonus warranty. Uh, for having it done at a Yamaha. Telltale it, it ejects water out of that little, you can put a put a uh, brush or something yeah. like that up there and just clean it out but um, the check is just remove this little grill, it's held on with, it's held on with, with a little screw yeah. from the other, it's removing the lower gear case here but the tricky bit is you've got to back this yeah. little nut off and wind this one up so it is a bit of a trick to getting it all back together, getting the water tube and the gear selector back. Yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll generally, should be checked every year, really. You get three years out of an impeller as a rule. But, so so. Uh, I'll show you how to put the, uh, the lid back on, because that does uh, cause a little bit of... Yeah, turn that so it's horizontal, so it goes through the little slot there. And then I usually just sort of get my finger under that, guide it under that little, that little lip there. So it, it definitely engages underneath it, and then lift that I'll over the top up. there mm -hmm. and that's it that's all. show you that tilt assembly uh, again because i did sort of show you a little bit in the tank but to tilt it because if you try and tilt it now you'll see it doesn't want to move so you flap that down you should then be able to reach over and you'll hear the little ratchet and that's now up so that that will it will hold it like that and, and it, you know if it bounces all the waves and the like it's not going to release but the only way to get it back down is to flip that back up 
from the ratchet retreats. So it's either fully up down. or fully down? Yeah, fully up or fully down, midway. there's no there's no midway. And you'll see straight away that's locked again because to, to put it into the tilt down position, that, that sort of disengages that ratchet and, and engages the, uh, the the lock for the reverse. You can't go to quite a shallow draft or anything as you come into the beach. So if you were going to do that, you, you could just clip that down. Obviously you can't then use reverse, you see, but you just lift that up so you hear the first click and you've got a shallow in there, you see. I thought it was either up or down. There's another one. No, I, I, I thought we were talking about the, the flipper. No, sorry, I was, I was talking about the... So, and you've got a second okay. one there. Oh, so you could come quite a way up, but obviously again, if you wanted that back down, You've got to flip that. Yeah, I've just, I've just undone it so I can do it by hand now. So you just want to get a little jar under there. And the trick is not to drop the screw. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked lifted these things in and out of uh, buckets and things. Uh, Not as bad as they were, four strokes have definitely, um, they've definitely kind of gone a little bit light, lighter weight. So direction of fuel, so that goes to the engine and then you'll see that one's got a little picture of a fuel tank. People do get confused because they think it means fuel tank that way. No, it's actually fuel tank that way, the fuel direction's going that way. So the one with the little fuel tank on it, that goes on to the fuel tank and the one with the arrow, that goes to the engine, otherwise it'll pump it backwards and obviously you, you pump it like that. The arrow's a bit of a clue there. The yeah. one thing with these when they're brand new, they sometimes uh, take a little bit of doing it, getting the air out, the fuel in and the air out. So what you do is you, you plug it into your fuel tank, with fuel in obviously, and then the, en the engine end there, if you part plug it onto the engine and pump the ball, squirt a bit out, but it primes it up. Of course, be really careful of that fuel that's knocking about then that you don't accidentally set fire to it somehow. You know, maybe have a rag under it. I need to do that once just to prime that up the first time because it's brand new, it's never had fuel in it. Um, you've got your kill cord. It has to be connected to the engine in order for the engine to start. If it's disconnected at any point, the engine will stop and that obviously wants to clip onto your lap. Um, you've got a um, spark plug spanner there. So if, you, if you do manage to uh, hydraulic the engine, you know, if it goes upside down or store it on, you know, on the side and it, it, it manages to get a bit of oil in the combustion chamber, you might want to take the spark plug out and, and, and just flush it through a little bit and then put the plug back in, so that gives you the ability to do that. And then there's a manual starter cord there, I commend that to be honest, because you've got to take bits off the engine to use it, yeah. but it, it is there as a, you know, but they, they, you'll see, they're so easy to start, the kilk, the, you know, the pull cord, they don't usually break these days, and then you've got your manuals in there. <laughs> that much of it, yeah, it it's really good. a manual, that, that bit there. So, yeah. And then your fuel tank. So, uh, again, it's brand new, it's not been opened, so no fuel in it, so you'll need to fill that up too. Yeah. And that's how you operate a Yamaha 9.9. We've had the Yamaha 9.9 .9 for a few weeks now, so we thought we'd do a review of it. We have it covered normally. Why two covers, you should, uh, you might ask. Well, we're just slightly worried that um, when you have the handle back up, that any rain that falls, because it is normally stored on the back of the boat, can get in where the mechanisms are under the handle. So we put a second cover over the top of it and that solves all the Is it problems. easy to start? Well it is, yeah, provided you engage the the poles on the on the starter and give it a quick pull. It's it's you've got to definitely engage it before you begin your pull and then just basically it's all about speed rather than power. Mm -hmm. And Mary can start it, I can start it. I wouldn't say it was super easy to start but it is easy to start. The only issues we've had with it on the boat are we had to add a little spacer in here uh, because I think the, the mount is a lot bigger than on this type of motor. Um, quite a lot of grease on the system which is good. The only thing I would probably talk about is, although we, it showed us how to grease this, it seems as though there's a specialised grease nipple that's required so may either have to find that or um, come up with some alternative. Um, we've checked the oil a couple of times. That seems to be okay. Um, we've bought a lock to go over the clips here, um, but it's not on at the moment. And the up-down clip works really well. Um, and it's been putting the boat on the plane really easily. Um, so we're not quite sure whether we've got the motor um, set up quite correctly at the moment. There is a pin system in here, as you can see just down here. 
which uh, we had on, it was originally came, the motor came with it on the first haul. I've moved it to the second haul uh, after the first uh, outing. So I don't know whether we'd need to bring it back to the first haul or move it out to the second haul. But whichever, we'll fiddle around with that and get that working. Um, I think it's probably slightly shorter between the prop and the top of so the So when it goes on... When it goes on the transom of the, the dinghy, this, this, I don't know what the depth is here, but uh, it might be slightly too high here, so you may need to actually trim uh, the transom slightly to uh, to get the engine deep enough in the water. So on this particular dinghy, it's it's a V bottom, but it's a it's inflated, so you have like a little V on the bottom that's co uh, that's created by a bladder that runs along the middle of here. And when it's actually inflated, it, it, it does track okay, but I think there's air comes out the bottom of it and, and the bottom of the dinghy def uh, deforms when we're at higher speed. So it gets up on the plane really quickly, but then there's a kind of a strange, you, you, every so often as you go over a big wave, it, it seems to gather air underneath here, and I think that, that's what causes the cavitation. The gear lever is really easy to use, you know, forward and back, very smooth. The controls are easily uh, accessible, very easy to handle, all in one area, so no big issues with uh, the controls. The connector for the fuel line clips in here. Um, it is quite stiff to put in, and the clip on the side of it sometimes quite difficult to get off, but I think that's a good thing so that it does hold itself in position and you don't lose fuel from there. We have fitted a new set of falls, six part purchase with a clam, clam keys on the top. That helps Mary lower it into the boat and it means she can jam it when uh, she needs to so she's got both hands free to handle the motor. Engine fits okay in the strap we had. You can see the old grubby strap that we had for the old engine. That works okay. It's running really well. Um, starts well, keeps going. Uh, doesn't seem to be any faults with it at the moment, so we're, we're crossing our fingers. Everything's going to be fine with it. It's, we've got the system down to getting it on and off quite easily now. The throttle has easy to read controls. It's a setting for choke and then one for a warm-up. So do we like the motor? In conclusion, yes we do. Um, it's been running really well, no problems with it. I wouldn't expect it at one of a new motor, but yeah, we're happy with the motor. Good quality, seems to be built well, uh, and we've got good instructions on how to use it. So we're looking forward to a long and prosperous life from it.